Hello, you beautiful nerds. It's the most wonderful time of the year. That's right, it's almost 420. And you know me and my lists. I'm always doing that. So I thought, why not make a list of all my favorite stoner comedies to celebrate? Hopefully this will give you some ideas on what to watch when the day rolls around, and feel free to put some suggestions in the comments if you feel like there's a flick that I left out. Before we get into the list, I want to explain how I came up with it, because some serious thought went into this shit. All the movies in this video are hilarious and iconic in their own right, but I decided to rank every movie based on how they performed in three different categories. How funny it is, how good the script is, and how much weed is in the movie or how it directly affects affects the story. I mean, I don't understand any of that. Not at all. I just wanted you to know how hard it was. But anyway, you get the gist. You've seen a fucking top 10 list before. So let's go ahead and count down the Number 10, How High. Regular Joe Silas P. Silas smokes some magical weed that contains the spirit of his super smart, super dead best friend. This magic weed makes him and his new best friend, Jamal, geniuses. So they get accepted into an Ivy League college. As their genius weed starts to run out, Jamal and Silas try to maintain their grades and fit in with the collegiate crowd. And so, hey, he probably been knocked up more times than me and your ass put together. Harvard. Get him. Oh, short, Colin Powell, haircut, having asthma. Sorry. Mustache wearing asthma. Fucking. Yeah. Like Richard Pryor, short, fire your ass. Up. Actually, they don't. They don't try that hard to fit in. This movie is funny. But it's also really fucking dumb. Like, all stoner comedies are kind of dumb, but the concept for this movie is, like, next level stupid. It does have some interesting surface level commentary about class, race, and the trappings of collegiate lifestyle. Brothers, join us at Reparations Technical Institute and learn hatred for the white devil in a relaxed campus atmosphere where classes range from hatred for the white devil to advanced hatred for the white devil and volleyball. Next. But yeah, it's mostly just dumb. I still really like it though. This was the time in American history where Red Man and Method Man were on top of the fucking world. And their charisma in this movie is indisputable. Again, it's pretty goddamn dumb. I mean, these niggas are smoking their dead best friend. But this flick is still a quintessential 420 movie. Shit, I'm disappearing. Shit, I'm disappearing. What? 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 Number nine, Detroit Rock City. It's the 70s and a few high school bandmates win tickets to a Kiss concert in, you guessed it, Detroit Rock City. You're talking people passing around joints in the audience. You're talking about fucking Detroit Rock City, brother. Shake your wee wee. So they embark on a road trip full of insane characters and farcical adventures that rival National Lampoon. I mean, like the good National Lampoon movies. This movie holds a special place in my heart. Not only do I personally really like Kiss, and I was also born in Detroit, like most angry adolescents with too much time on their hands. I was in a band. Call me biased, but in my opinion, this is one of the funniest coming of age stoner films of all time. The pacing is crazy fast. Every scene just kind of seems to escalate to a hilariously calamitous level. Most kids go through a transitionary period in life. Moving away, graduating college, your dad was an evil villain that just got put in jail so now your mom is making you change schools. These things happen. And what makes these changes so heartbreaking is that you usually have to say goodbye to someone you really care about. And this movie is kind of all about shedding layers and taking the first steps into the next chapter of your life. With a criminally underrated ensemble riddled with the likes of Sam Huntington, Natasha Lyonne, and Eddie Furlong, this one easily makes the list. Dude, where's my car? Where's his car, dude? Number eight, Harold and Kumar. When roommates Harold and Kumar get the late night munchies, the duo embark on a road trip to the best fast food spot on earth. I want something we haven't had in a while. Something different, something that'll really hit the spot. Now I've been to White Castle. It's pretty fucking amazing. But the movie's not really about White Castle. It's about the perfect food when you are high as shit. It's about the complete satisfaction of getting exactly what you want. And both of these characters are kind of in a weird place in their lives. Harold knows what he wants, but he doesn't have the balls to pursue it. And Kumar still doesn't really know what he wants. Though the sequels are pretty good, none of them live up to the magic of the original. John Cho and Cal Penn play so well off of each other, it's not hard to believe that these two characters have been friends for a very long time. And what's a good stoner movie without cameos? There's Ryan Reynolds, Malin Ackerman, Jamie Kennedy, Gary Anthony Williams. Jax is trying to escape! What are you talking about? I'm just sitting here. Christopher Maloney, and of course, Neil Patrick Harris playing himself. Excuse me, are you Neil Patrick Harris? Yep. These guys made an instant cult classic out of this flick and became, in their own right, an iconic comedy pair. Right up there with Abbott and Costello, Keenan and Kill, Mary Kate and Ashley. As great as they are, I couldn't rank them above this next dynamic duo. Number seven, Chi Chan Chong. 
It's about two guys trying to find a joint so they can start a band. Cheech and Chong's first movie is about a privileged stoner musician that moves out of his rich parents' house and meets a slacker that would become his new best friend. Weed has kind of been seen as a form of modernity in recent years. Like, a lot of people think smoking weed is cool or whatever. As more states legalize marijuana use, you're starting to see it a lot more in popular culture. In 78, though, that shit was still very illegal. Nobody had seen any movies like this before where the stoners were the good guys and the cops with the bad guys. We made minorities real people. So in that aspect alone, this movie is ahead of its time. Cheech and Chong are the pothead pair. Comedy ages faster than any other genre, but this movie is still pretty damn funny despite being over 40 years old. I've been smoking since I was born, man. I could smoke anything, man. I even smoke that tight stick, you know? Tight stick? Yeah, you know, that stuff is tied to a stick, you know? It's pretty silly and doesn't really have a plot. Like, shit just kind of happens in this movie. What the script did, it got us from point A to B. So there's not a lot of writing. We were just making it up as we went along. And, and But we had an idea of what we were doing. We had we have to get from here to there, and then from there to there, and then from there to there. But it's all really funny. If you can believe it, my mom showed this to me when I was a kid because she just thought it was hilarious. She didn't smoke weed or anything. She just, she just loved this movie. It kind of feels like a 420 Blues Brothers. It's such a silly thrill ride though that if you're not taking yourself too seriously you can't help but enjoy yourself Number six, Super Troopers. Do we look like the two dumbest guys in the world to you? Precinct of slacker highway patrolmen stumble upon a drug conspiracy that could give their station the publicity that they need to keep them from getting shut down. It's hard to think of a cop movie being a stoner comedy, but the guys at Broken Lizard pulled off that duality brilliantly. This movie weirdly humanizes police officers by giving it the feel of a man-child workplace comedy. Now, I don't think all cops are bad people. You lie! All right, you know what I mean. And it's kind of weird seeing people who are supposed to be responsible for the community safety being depicted as buffoon. It's kind of why I can't stand Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Not to mention that police are like the mortal enemies of weed smokers. But this is a totally farcical comedy. Like, no one thinks police act like the ones in this film. And as cool as these characters are, no one would actually want cops to act the way that they do in this film. But all that being said, these guys are hysterical. Like, how do you not fall in love with these guys? Enhance. 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 Just print the damn thing! Number five, Smiley Face. Hello there, Smiley. Hi, Jane. When out-of-work actress Jane accidentally eats enough edibles to make Wiz Khalifa go blind, she goes on an unorthodox and somewhat preventable adventure across Los Angeles trying to pay her rent. This is a fucking awesome flick. Every year around this time, I'm always surprised by how many people have never heard of this film. Most 420 movies are buddy comedies, but Anna Faris manages to carry the whole movie by herself. She has so many scenes that make me die laughing, it's hard for me to pick a favorite. There are a lot of awesome cameos too. Harold and Kumar's own John Cho, Danny Trejo, John Krasinski, Adam Brody, Jane Lynch, Roscoe Lee Brown. Roscoe Lee? Holy shit, you're famous. Yes, I am. Carrot Top. Carrot Top. Carrot Top, helmed by the only Asian director on this list. This movie is super goofy while also being kind of smart. It also moves at a really fun pace where you never get bored. Till we meet again. Okay. Number four, Half Baked. For $400, I got Jerry Garcia in a pouch, man. Who the hell told you that? The guy who sold it to me, Barry Garcia. Was he supposed to be Jerry Garcia's brother? No, actually, it's Andy Garcia's brother. There may not be a more well-known or instantly recognized pothead movie than Half-Baked. Tamara Davis, director of classic films like CB4 and Happy Gilmore, crafts this goofy yet clever ensemble buddy comedy starring Harlan Williams, Guillermo Diaz, Jim Brewer, and the now infamous Dave Chappelle. He told me about his lawyer. He had sex with my mama! It was an instant hit upon its theatrical release, but Universal Studios themselves only let the film run in theaters for four weeks. This was partially due to the fact that people were smoking weed in screenings across the country, and the studio didn't want to be associated with that. Even with the short run, Half Big managed to earn four times the film's budget. Just imagine how much the film would have made if it had the chance to stay in theaters longer than a month. It would have done, like, better, better than it did. Don't shoot! We're just uh, trying to take our son out of this hostile environment. Their son? 
Maybe they're one of those gay couples. Number three, Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. I know, right? I almost forgot about these guys too. But these guys are synonymous with 420 culture. Though for a long time, these guys were the R2 and 3PO of director Kevin Smith's earlier films, Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back place our favorite side characters center stage. This is an awesomely crafted amalgamation of characters and storylines from all of Smith's prior films to this one. Which is an incredible feat considering this was years before Marvel created their cinematic universe and inspired everyone else to start doing it. Badly. I'm looking at you, Dark Universe. Jay and Silent Bob were a constant in the director's films that helped clue the audience in on the fact that all the films existed in the same world. Smith is a true movie buff, so you'll notice subtle nods to other films, including Cheech and Chong. He's also a big old comic book nerd, so yeah, you'll see a lot of those references too. It's an introspective look at the way comic book movies are made and how audiences react to them in the age of social media. The buzz is any indicator that movie's gonna make some huge bank. What buzz? The internet buzz. What the fuck is the internet? It's also a satire of a genre that wouldn't become nauseatingly popular for another decade. After X-Men hit at the box office, all the studios started buying up every comic property they could get their dirty little hands on. With cameos from Ben Affleck, Matt Damon, Carrie Fisher, Mark Hamill, Chris Rock, George Carlin, Tracy Morgan, Will Ferrell, and a performance by Morris Day in the Time, Jay and Silent Bob Strikes Back feels like a cinematic event comparable to the Avengers. Number two, Pineapple Express. I used to use this little gun when I was a prostitute. A process server and his pot dealer are on the run from a drug kingpin and a corrupt cop, while in possession of the best weed in the world, the titular Pineapple Express. When Judd Aptow initially asked writing partners Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg to pin an action-packed weed comedy, they said no. Their thought was that it'd be impossible to write a good film that would essentially be bad boys but with weed. But the more they thought about the idea, the more they became enticed by the challenge of actually pulling it off. And they definitely pulled it off. This movie is damn near perfect. It's hilariously written and acted, but it's also shot like an action movie. Like some of these scenes are amazing and really beautifully shot, and that somehow makes some of the scenes funnier. Oh shit! Oh shit! Go, 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 go! It's one of the absolute best films in Seth Rogen's filmography, and it's not even up for debate whether this deserves to be called a stoner movie classic. There's only one 420 movie that's better. I'm gonna get you high today, cause it's Friday, you ain't got no job, and you ain't got shit to do. Number one, Friday. Written by Ice Cube and DJ Pooh, Friday follows hail fellow well-met Craig on his first day smoking weed with his pothead friend who is aptly named Smokey. You got a big boot? Smokey, I am not trying to look at that girl's booty, all right? No, you don't look at a booty before. Friday is a bona fide classic. Much like Blade Runner though, the enjoyment of this movie is very much dependent on the version you watch. There's a director's cut out there that's just a little longer and it's not as good. It's just too fucking long. Future Italian job and straight out of Compton director F. Gary Gray makes his feature fume debut with this one and latens the film with a beautiful soundtrack that includes the likes of Isley Brothers, Dr. Dre, and Rick James, just to name a few. This also might be the most quotable movie on the list. To this day, you can still hear people say, and once you hear Chris Tucker say, you got knocked the fuck out, you can't unsee it. The best thing about this film is that there isn't a wasted moment. Every action develops a character, moves the story along, or foreshadows something that will happen later. The script does a really great job of doing two things at once, building relatable characters and making sure the audience doesn't get bored. I dare say it's a perfect stoner movie. Yeah, it's a funny movie, but the real feat is how tightly written and directed it is. It gets goofy and hyper-realistic, but it's also not afraid to get heartfelt and teach a real lesson. This is the only movie on the list that actually gives me moments where I want to tear up. And John Witherspoon's comedic and dramatic performance in this movie is just so, like, people don't talk about it enough. And you think you're a man with that gun in your hand, don't you? I'm a man without it. Put the gun down. Come on, put up your dukes. Now you're a man. Friday is one of the most iconic, legendary, and overall beloved comedic films of all time. And it's still underrated. Okay, that's it for today's list. But what's your favorite stoner comedy? Let it be known in the comments section. And if you like this video, please do not forget to like and subscribe. I know sometimes y'all be forgetting. Marijuana affects the memory. But stay safe, you little potheads and non-potheads. And may the force be with you.